With his birth, a person receives certain programs from his ancestors, not from his parents. Destructive or just very strong. One of his ancestors went through a traumatic event, a transforming experience, and carried it throughout his life and passed it on to future generations. As a result, grandchildren and great-grandchildren, instead of accomplishing their own goals, have to work through old scenarios of people who already cease to exist. How is it related to reality? It is related to reality. And I think we already discussed this topic repeatedly during our sessions of magic Q&As. This is a so-called family karma, a family curse. So what is it? It is some sort of a restricting or directing program that gives you no choice. This program may be stronger than the person's personal one. That is why the person will depend on this program. He will be forced to execute it. Why execute it? This program contains information on why one should execute it. A different thing is that a person, as a rule, is unable to grasp it, meaning he can't comprehend why. If he is able to understand the reason why it has to be executed, it means that his consciousness is strong enough to get rid of this program in the case he doesn't wish to execute it, or if it does not go along with his personal goals and personal plans. This really happens sometimes. It may occur due to someone's obligations, meaning the ancestors have a certain debt which eventually gets passed on to their descendants. As time goes by, this debt gets divided, as a rule, among seven generations. Never more, because it is impossible to let it be executed by a higher number of descendants. No such debts exist. With each generation it becomes weaker and weaker. Since we talk about powerful destructive programs, as a rule, we can identify those programs by their negative effects. Because if this program is of a positive kind, we don't consider it as a karmic one, one you need to get rid of. On the contrary, we see it as some type of blessing although it is the same in essence, as there might be a debt and there might be an abundance, meaning that the ancestors could have achieved something for their descendants that would be passed on to generations following exactly the same algorithm. The children would receive more of it, other members of the family would get lesser and lesser, until it completely runs out. It is necessary to recognize such programs. If you know for sure that those abilities and mechanisms you received are not your personal achievement, but are rather something you got from your ancestors, because it is a talent that is passed on from generation to generation, or some type of super abilities or something else, you need to treat them with exactly the same attention as if this program was a destructive one. In other words, any debts, any impairments or diseases, all are effects of a destructive program. A constructive program that strengthens human abilities is some kind of an amplifying factor, so to say, speaking in slang, when every human effort gets multiplied several times. And a destructive program follows just the same principle. It is a decreasing coefficient with a negative value which makes every effort several times less effective. That being said, several such programs may exist within one mind. If, for example, each program was passed on along its own branch, since we consist of different bloodlines, some program acts as an increasing one. There are certain things you get very lucky and successful at, others where you are unlucky and have no success. Certain rituals and instruments exist that may equalize success and bad fortune, almost as if neutralizing them. But, as a rule, people don't think about it because they see the positive things as a natural occurrence and consider the negative ones as man-made. That is why, unfortunately, they benefit from neither one, because a negative experience of your ancestor still is an experience. First of all, it helps understand what algorithm for achieving a result didn't work out the way it should. And then, 
to figure out what was the plan and why it failed. If such information is impossible to obtain, then judging by your own life, by your personal effects, you can trace what brings you the results and what doesn't, and why. In order to do that, the consciousness has to be structured in a slightly different way. It must be the consciousness of a self-observer, as if observing yourself from the side, being your own psychiatrist in essence.